If you post something to the internet, it's possible that post could go viral and end up being dispersed to a number of different locations. It might end up in blog posts, tweets, or broadcast out in emails that reach across the world. In a way, this is what we see with minerals, which are inorganic compounds needed for your body to function properly. They all come from the same source, the earth. These minerals then find their way into plants that grow in the earth's soil. Animals then pick up the minerals from the plants they eat, while other minerals get washed into the oceans where they are picked up by sea plants and critters. Eventually, these plants, animal products, and seafoods find their way to your neighborhood grocery store, and when you eat them, the minerals that started in the ground end up inside of you. This is a good thing because your body needs a variety of minerals to carry out many vital functions. One of these minerals, selenium, is a trace mineral that works as an antioxidant and is needed for the synthesis of thyroid hormones. Selenium, like all minerals, comes from the ground, but concentrations of selenium vary greatly between different regions of the world. Now, if you live somewhere like the United States, where we import foods from a number of different geographical areas, then you likely meet your selenium intake with little difficulty. However, there are groups of people in the world that eat a diet that consists of foods grown or obtained only from local sources. So what happens if that local source is too low or too high in selenium? Could this varying concentration of selenium affect the health of the people in that area? These are the questions we'll explore in this lesson. A few of the better food sources of selenium include seafood, organ meats, such as kidney and liver, and eggs. And depending on the selenium content of the soil in which certain plant foods are grown, we see that sources of selenium can also include grains, nuts, and seeds. Having a selenium deficiency is not a major concern for otherwise healthy citizens of the U.S. because the foods we eat come from many different areas, so the foods that come from soils with a low selenium concentration are offset by the high selenium content foods from other areas. The same cannot be said for groups of people living in regions of China, where the diet consists mainly of locally obtained foods grown in soils with low selenium levels. In these areas, symptoms of selenium deficiency may present as muscular weakness and fatigue, which might be tied to the role selenium plays in proper thyroid gland health, as the thyroid gland regulates your metabolism and gives you pep. Selenium deficiency, in combination with an infection, can lead to Keshan disease, which is a form of heart disease that occurs in parts of China. In fact, the disease was named after Keshan County, which is located in northeast China and the site of the first reported symptoms. Too little selenium may also play a role in Keshin Beck disease, which is a disorder of the bones and joints that occurs in low selenium areas of China, Tibet, and Siberia. This disorder causes stiff and deformed joints, mainly in children. People from the region affected by Cation Beck disease have given it the nickname Big Bone Disease, which likely comes from the enlargement of the joints. It might help you to recall that this disorder affects the bones and joints if you remember that the shin is a bone in the lower leg, and we see the word shin hidden in the word Cation. We also see that a selenium deficiency may be associated with male infertility. This link is likely due to the fact that selenium is an essential element for normal development and function of the male reproductive system. Just like there are areas where soil concentrations of selenium are low, there are also areas where soil concentrations are high. This can be a factor leading to excessive intake of selenium and selenium toxicity. We also see that some foods, such as Brazil nuts, grown under the right conditions can contain very high amounts of selenium. So overconsumption of certain foods or taking a supplement can lead to toxicity. Regardless of the reason for the excessive amount, 
early toxicity symptoms result in garlic breath and a metallic taste in the mouth. One of the more distinct symptoms associated with selenium toxicity is hair and nail loss or brittleness, which can result in the complete loss of the fingernails and significant hair loss. You might recall this loss of hair if you remember that selenium comes from the Greek word selene, which means moon. So if you take in too much selenium, your head might look like a bald moon. Additional symptoms may include fatigue, irritability, and skin rashes. Let's review. We learned that minerals are inorganic compounds needed for your body to function properly and that selenium is a trace mineral that works as an antioxidant and is needed for the synthesis of thyroid hormones. Food sources of selenium include seafood, organ meats, and eggs. And depending on the selenium content of the soil in which certain plant foods are grown, selenium can also be found in grains, nuts, and seeds. Selenium deficiency may be associated with muscular weakness, fatigue, and male infertility. Selenium deficiency in combination with an infection can lead to Keshen disease, which is a form of heart disease that occurs in parts of China. And too little selenium may also play a role in Keshen Beck disease, or big bone disease, which is a disorder of the bones and joints that occurs in low selenium areas of China, Tibet, and Siberia. Selenium toxicity can result in garlic breath, a metallic taste in the mouth, and hair and nail loss or brittleness. Additional symptoms may include fatigue, irritability, and skin rashes.